This week, we're continuing Poison Study by Maria Snyder, otherwise known as It Felt Appropriate Leaving My Mouth. Hi, readers. I'm Jordan. And I'm Katie. And welcome to Not Another Heroine, the podcast where we break down the best and worst fictional heroines, those swashbuckling ladies who have to work a little harder than expected for their happy ending. Want to see what's next on our TBR list? Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Instagram for a sneak peek at upcoming content or to help us pick our next book. First order of business. Yeah. I apologize <laughs> for, for last week's episode. We apologize. We'll caveat that. Part one was my responsibility and I <laughs> did not <laughs> follow through very well. Yeah. The alcohol didn't help. Yeah. Because we we like went in. We went hard. We're yeah. like, let's do Twilight again. I, yeah. But it was almost because uh, I feel like Twilight was like chaotic, but this was like chaotic chaotic yeah like we, <laughs> hard to stay focused but yeah. that's it feels like that's how this book is though yeah. we love this book it's yes. why we picked it yeah because you've read it like three times i've read it twice like i would read it again yeah and i still can't remember what's going I on <laughs> there's a lot going on yeah it's what is it called like an oubliette isn't that like where oh, you girl, really oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you get stuck in it and like you forget that you're in it but then you forget about it. But then you re-remember you're in it. That's this book. I didn't know there was a word for something yeah. like that. <laughs> I could be totally butchering that, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. And that's this book. Yes. <laughs> but still really good. Yeah. Which is bonkers. Like, how do you not? You know what I mean? I, I could not remember how this book ended. Nope. And I was just trying to write that today. And like, mm, I just read it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm, I'm reading it and trying to type at the same time. And I can't. It's like, wait a second. What happened? It's okay. Yeah. It's fine. Yep. Yep, poison study. <laughs> Read it. Uh, part, <laughs> part two. Part two. That's where we're at today. We're at part three. <laughs> no, did we record? We didn't record part two. Yeah, we did. Did we? Yeah, <laughs> that's the part I did. Oh my god. Yeah, because you did part one and then I did part two. I didn't think then... we recorded part two. I thought we did. Did we? Did we? So we have discovered that we did not, in fact, <laughs> record part two of Poison Study. Uh, I think I had a dream that we recorded it. <laughs> Welcome to part two. <laughs> Where did we leave off again? Girl, I don't even know. Oh, at the fire Festival? This is all very fitting, though, of like, we can't remember what's going on with this book. We can't yeah. remember what's going on with our script. Yeah. <laughs> like, it is the weirdest. Yeah, dude, I, mm -hmm. I just work here. Yep. But I don't because this isn't a job. <laughs> We have with the job one day. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so the fire festival. Valix dressing up like a drunk dude. Comes Which is kind of hot in a weird way. It is. Like the way he like saved her, like yeah. just casually. Yeah, he was just there in the background, just you know, keeping an eye out. Uh, what was that book you recommended to me over? watching over you or something oh someone to watch over me <laughs> <laughs> that's valley <laughs> actually yes. uh yeah so the magician he scares her away yeah so later that night yelena is waiting up for valak which that was super cute so valak is obviously like trying to find the magician still and she's back in their rooms they have a they have a shared room <laughs> oh <laughs> but she's like waiting up because she literally says in the book she's like i'm just like too scared or something to that effect to like go to sleep without him and it's like girl Aww. Um, and he kind of like finally returns and they talk through the theories of why there's a southern magician that's like uh, randomly trying to, you know, kill her, assassinate her, harass her. And one is the one of the theories is that what did you call him last episode? General bitch ass. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> uh, yeah, that dude um, whose name is Brazel. They kind of are considering that he might be hiring Southerners to try and kill Yelena. And Valak then like kind of puts that idea out and then immediately dismisses it because he's like, oh, that doesn't really make sense. But then he just kind of claims that they need sleep and they go to bed, whatever. I feel like Valak is constantly underestimating her. A little bit. I could see that. Like, why would someone want to kill you? You're clearly not special. You're just the poison yeah. pister thing. And I feel like he doesn't understand general bitch ass either because <laughs> Jordan's face. You said face. that so coldly. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> but I, I like feel like if he understood the 
what had happened between them and how much of like a psychopath he is, then maybe he'd understand like why. But Valak is smart. So that is true. Why would Yelena kill this Lord's son? Like, yeah. why would she be in a position to do that in the first place? Yeah. Like, clearly there's something special about yeah. her. Yeah. I didn't love the like obliviousness on his part, but we'll, we'll yeah. forgive it. <laughs> Oblia. The day following, Yelena steps out for the fugitive competition they have going on. And then uh, she kind of has asked some of her kind of friends that she has for supplies, including some glue and a very big scary knife from the cook. And so she does the whole go south towards the border because that's what... You mean she didn't put a bunch of books in her rucksack to take with her? (laughs) (laughs) Everything we ever talk about now is going to be the fourth wing, Uh like... So she actually packs what she's supposed to pack for us. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Good heroin. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> um, and so she like pretends she's going to go south towards the border, uh, but she goes into a stream and then she's like, oh, I'm like crossing the river and then I'm, you know, lose my scent so the dogs can't find me. But then she like pulls out some like acrobatic skills. I forgot that this was a thing. Like even though they had just talked about it at the fire festival, I didn't know that she was like actually a gymnast so she like flings up this like rope thing into the trees and like climbs her way up which girl i cannot climb a rope <laughs> she does i'm gonna go she does some tarzan shit is what you wrote here <laughs> well she does she like swings from tree to tree like i how do you do that i don't know she does because she's an acrobat and i but she's also how yes she was a gymnast but yeah. how is she in the same shape like she spent a year and a half in prison oh, like that is she's down there she's getting tested on poisons every day uh uh-uh. Plot hole. Uh-uh. I found one. I didn't want to find wow. one. Wow. I did not even. Okay. Yeah. How did she do all that? Anyway, she's swinging from trees to trees, kind of congratulating herself on a well, a job well done, eating her lunch, which I thought was like really funny. She's just like hanging out. And then two guys pop out of the bushes below her and they don't see her, but they're like kind of, you know, she's overhearing them talking and he, they're annoyed that they haven't caught her yet. And so she's just like listening to them. And then this turns out to be Ari and Janko, who will come back later, which are kind of like fun Simone and Pumbaa-esque yeah. characters. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't say their names separately. Yeah. It's always Ari and Jenko. Yeah, I love them. Um, but she, you know, sees them and she's like, okay, like I need to maybe skedaddle because they're getting a little bit close. But then all of a sudden she's like filled with this like extreme anxiety. And so she's like, oh my God, I need to get out of here right now. And then lo and behold, it's the magician that's like giving her all of these fake feelings. And the magician leads her into this like opening. And this magician was the same one that tried to kill her earlier. Eris? Iris? Iris sounds right. Iris. I read it as Iris, but that also. I, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of like vowel sounds all next to each other. So Iris Iris offers her an escape. She's like, okay, you can come south and learn magic because you're a magician. Surprise. Because untrained magicians pull from like the fabric of magic in the world and they pull too much and it like makes a giant tear in the fabric that takes like a bajillion years to fix, which I kind of thought was a fun explanation of a magic system. I feel like it's always kind of like glossed over in fantasy books, but this was like interesting to me you either get too much detail or not enough on the magic system and this was a a good balance did did we talk uh last week about how magic is treated in ixia i don't think so because it's outlawed right yeah right so that's what you you can't use magic Mm -hmm. um and it's like military government land thing it's just a big no-no yeah and there's some allusions like earlier in the book to yelena being able to use magic she kind of describes it as like a buzzing sound and then all of a sudden something happens and she's like safe so it's not totally out of like left field but it feels a little bit out of left field that this magician's like you're a magician yelena this harry is, potter reference <laughs> this is the first thing in the book that starts to like add a bunch of shit layered mm-hmm. on top of one another because yeah. like the initial premise of poisoner high up commander or like taste tester like Mm -hmm. a lot could have been done just with that i almost feel like magic was unnecessary yeah to an extent i agree but it kind of makes sense um as we'll see later for reasons why certain things happen but yeah so she offers her the out and then yelena i kind of like this perspective in the book because she has mixed feelings about it she's like yeah i like kind of want to go with you but also i have this like poison in my system and i won't last that long you know, like a day unless you guys can magically fix me. And the magician is like, 50 50 odds we'll be able to like figure it out and she's like that's not really good enough and so i just appreciated that yelena was actually coherent reasonable yeah Yeah. 
Because I feel like a lot of the times you get the heroine that just like runs off and she's like, we'll figure it out. Like, fuck it. We're doing it live. And it's like you immediately get caught. (laughs) What I appreciated about this particular world building is that our heroine isn't like actively rebelling against like the the monarchy or the government or Mm -hmm. like it's not it's like a very normal kind of, well, this is the way the world is. And I'm just one little puzzle piece in it. Yeah. I like that she's going with the flow. She's like, this really is kind of the better of Mm -hmm. the outcomes. Like, I'm not in a bad spot. (laughs) And so she basically says to the magician, you know, give me like a year to kind of see where, you know, the dominoes stand. That's not a phrase, but it's now a phrase. Um, (laughs) See where the dominoes stand? Um, (laughs) Episode title. (laughs) It felt appropriate when it was leaving my mouth. Um, And the magician's like... (laughs) That might be another episode title. (laughs) Yeah, that might actually be the name. (laughs) Anyways, yeah. And the magician's like, okay, that makes sense because you have about a year before you'll pull a bunch of magic from the fabric and die. So uh, Yelena just pops back into the trees and she's like, okay, I'm going to wait for Valak to show up. And then all of a sudden he does turn up, like, turn up out of the blue wearing a skin tight, like, Spider-Man suit. I pictured this like a, um, like a wetsuit. Kind of yeah, I do too. Which, <laughs> they're not attractive. No. <laughs> like, it's just a gigantic unitard. <laughs> So it's also like neon green to like blend it with the trees. No, this was kind of the um, cringiest thing yeah. was Valix's, yeah. what is but it called, it, skin suit? Yeah. yeah. It, it comes back too. Because I know this is not the first or the last time. He has like a whole closet full of like skins too. <laughs> and I think one of them has like a hood on it too. <laughs> There's one scene scene where he has dark glasses. Oh, my God. I I feel like Valak is one of those, like, cringy dudes that wears, like, weird clothes. And he's like, what? It, like, makes sense for what I'm doing. And it's like, you look stupid. (laughs) Yeah. Ah, yeah. Anyways, they're sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. No, don't. No. (laughs) Katie. (laughs) They're not actually kissing, sadly. But while they're talking, you know, conveniently, a caravan plunders down on the road below them. And it has these, like, weird yellow pods with brown beans just kind of in the back and it's like a caravan of a bunch of very suspicious looking people and they're like oh that's weird let me go look at that and so Valak goes and chases down the caravan and Yelena and he basically tells Yelena like okay you know you did really good with this captive situation thing like you just need to turn yourself in because this is sketchy and so just as Valak disappears to go like chase after the caravan she's immediately like tackled to the ground by the two people who walked under her tree earlier and this it was kind of fun that she's just like okay i'm gonna like walk back and she's just like oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is cute yeah and so these two turn out to be janko and ari like we were talking about earlier and they're kind of cool about the whole thing they're like that was low-key impressive that you escaped us for a whole like afternoon we're not gonna really handcuff you because like you want to go back and you have to go back because of the whole poison thing like cool and so they head back to where their captain is and uh this dude turns into like a total dick bag for some reason his name is like captain Nix, i think i don't remember this character at all oh that's fair i only mention him because he comes back and tries to do something like kind of gross to yelena and then she beats him up yeah spoiler (laughs) again another thing that happens it's just another layer to remember yeah so anyway back at the castle the commander is like okay yeah please try to find out what these yellow pods are this is your research assignment basically and so a few days pass and commander dickface or bitch ass <laughs> <Dick face. laughs> I like that, that one guy. even better <laughs> commander dickface uh, finally leaves the castle and Yelena's watching him from like the workout yard because this is fantasy romance and <laughs> it's always a workout yard yeah. shirtless sword fighting that's yep. gonna happen yep and so Ari and Janko are there and she basically asks I'm like, hey, I want to protect myself. Can you guys teach me how to fight? We get the training montage, Rocky. Uh, And basically, yeah. And so Yelena goes to chase the commander's lunch, I think, that day or the next day. But there's this kind of fun interim scene that we get where she interrupts the commander talking to this tutor who's complaining about like a young girl student he has in his in his class and he's saying that she's being rude and like correcting him in front of the class and like being a know-it-all and as a know-it-all uh <laughs> i was, was like this oh, you as a child oh 100 <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah and so it was nice though because the commander is like okay i heard your side can you leave for a second and then he talks to the girl and he's like um hey like what is happening and she's like oh i'm just bored and I 
came up with ways to do these math problems faster than the tutor was asking us to do them in his way. And so the commander is like, okay, um, let me call in my head accounting guy. And he basically tells the girl that he has one day to like prove herself to the accountant and then that'll be like her apprenticeship basically. And it's kind of like a stupid scene to like devote so much time to. But, but it's very symbolic. Yeah, it's absolutely really characteristic of the commander is this kind of very like pragmatic character, like not an evil, you know, dictator necessarily, but he's like, if you're good at something, like that's what you're going to do, like regardless of your gender, regardless of anything, like you have a skill, let's foster it. And it was just a fun little like, oh, like the commander's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, it was a, felt like a very deliberate scene. Mm-hmm. Like we, you need a glimpse into the, to the commander yeah. for other things that happen further down the story. Yeah. So later that night, Elena is in their rooms, again, there, and a book topples over somewhere, and she's like, oh, that's kind of suspicious. Let me go investigate. And then she... <laughs> what, in what world does a book just topple? I know. Uh-huh. Like, unless he got ghosts. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so she stumbles into Valak's art room, where he's carving rocks into these, like, cute little statues that she's seen everywhere, and there's one on, like, the commander's desk, and, like, he has one on his desk. And that's, like, his art, the, his passion, yeah. his hobby. And so all of a sudden, she's like whisk, whisk around with like a knife to the throat. Um, but it's Valak kind of like smiling and he's like, are you snooping? And she's like, there was a book that toppled. Like, I thought you were a ghost, but it's you and you were testing me apparently. And so he says that he went to follow the caravan and it went to Commander Dick Face's new factory and that the seeds probably came from the South. So they're kind of suspicious and that's super illegal. And so, you know, they talk about this and then she asks if she should go to her own rooms now that uh, Commander Dick Face isn't there anymore. And Valak is like, uh, I mean, uh, well, you're still in danger. That whole magician thing. (laughs) You should just stay here. (laughs) It's just so cute. Like, just come out and say that you like her. (laughs) And then, again, we get the required, you know, he's fighting without a shirt on in the training yard, and she's, like, ogling him, basically. And then we're introduced to Marin, who's this, like, woman soldier who is... So what's a bow? Like a bow? Like a That's bow. what I thought too, but they make it sound like it's like a staff. I don't remember yeah. this oh. part <laughs> at all. <laughs> really? Yeah, really. <laughs> so I think it's like a big like staff um, made out of wood that you fight with. I don't know. That's kind of how it's described. But basically, the summary of that is Yelena kind of like harasses Marin into teaching her how to fight with that. But Marin also has a crush on Valak. 100%. You think? Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Because there's like a scene where they're like practicing fighting and uh, Valak comes in and she's like all of a sudden like standing up straight and she's like oh my gosh like he's here and then Yelena goes up to talk to him and he's like and Marin is like "Mm, what are you (laughs) taking away the (laughs) spotlight Uh, anyway with that diversion Valak randomly comes up to ask her how she feels after eating Criollo which is a new dessert made by Brazel's chef and he kind of asks like if she would feel any kind of way if she stopped eating it which obviously very suspicious maybe there's something in this dessert that is being fed to the commander like totally chocolate right that's what I got that's what I got too okay (laughs) basically chocolate with a funny name anyway life goes on as normal until Marg 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 (laughs) (laughs) mean lady the housemaid like she's like the chief servant spy for Valak. also yeah yeah did you say servant spy servant oh spy oh spy oh <laughs> i thought you said servant spy and i'm like is that some fancy <laughs> name i don't know <laughs> no. oh okay <laughs> yeah servant spy except she's not a great spy because you know she catches yelena outside the baths and she's like you're a rat but would this rat like some cheese <laughs> <It was laughs> which so is so corny <laughs> I know, it was super corny. <laughs> but it kind of almost weirdly fit her character as like this kind of like conniving evil. <laughs> it feels like um, this book set out to hit every single like fantasy romance trope. I could see that. Like how much can we fit into this yeah. one book? It- did it weirdly well, though. <laughs> but basically, Marg is like, so I have this lady who buys information from me. I, If you give me information, I'll sell it to her, and then I'll give you, like, a slice of the profits or whatever. And so Yelena is like, ooh, this isn't good. Like, how about you take me to meet this lady first so I know that you're legit? Which, good thinking on your feet. I don't know that I would. I would immediately claim up and be like, <gasps> you're asking me to spy espionage? <laughs> so Yelena then goes to taste the commander's food, and she overhears the commander arguing with phallic about who the commander's successor is going to be because i guess all of a sudden the commander has changed his opinion which is something that hadn't happened in like 15 years it's super out of the ordinary and so that's kind of like a suspicious thing that she just 
So that, happenstance. <laughs> I thought that was a cool world building government technique is so mm-hmm. the commander announces who's going to take over for him, but it's completely anonymous. Yeah. He doesn't reveal. He just says, oh, I changed my mind. And like, that's it. So I love it. Yeah. All the generals are like, is it going to be me? Am mm-hmm. I special? Because it's fun, too, because the, the commander like passes out parts of a puzzle and you have to put all of the parts together and then like reveal it with a key that Valak has. You're... I don't remember that. Okay. <laughs> Again, it's like <laughs> another layer that's just yeah. gone from my brain. But it's like fun because that's like an insurance policy. So it's like you have to have everyone on board in order to find out who the successor is. But yeah, anyway, so it's a big deal that she he is changing his mind all of a sudden. And so Marg sets a date to meet with her buyer of information. And so Yelena hadn't told Valak about this because she was kind of waiting for the right opportunity. And she's all of a sudden like, hey, uh, you have a leak. And he's like, whoa, what are you talking about? So... I, sorry to keep interrupting. No, do uh, please. It's notable that Valak acts like a little bitch for he does. a while. <laughs> so like from yeah. the moment that uh, Yelena agrees to spy for Marge, mm. uh, Valak starts acting like a total tool. <laughs> like, <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I honestly did not connect the dots that he was mad about that until this scene when he's like, oh, you're all of a sudden actually going to tell me about this? And she's like, yeah, you have a fucking spy on your staff. <laughs> so very reminiscent. And I think I can probably compare everything to Christ. Crown Duel. I was about to say, yep. But Crown yep. Duel, like, did this. Like, <laughs> did. same exact plot. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also, it's like a fun... Like, oh, I enjoy oh, reading it. I, yeah. love, I love when there's like unfounded <laughs> yep. uh, anger. Suspicion. And, and, yeah. yeah. And then like, I was read the whole time. Because mm-hmm. it's adorable because at the end of the scene where Valak is like, oh, like you're actually going to trust me with this. Like I, you're a legitimate you're, trustful you're who person. You're I thought I was and I love you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically, he's like, okay. Uh, and I quote, you once said I wasn't ready to believe your reason for killing Rayod. I'll believe you now. And then she says, but I'm not ready to tell you. What she says is, cute. fuck you, bitch, is what yeah, she says. Bit, yeah. like, <laughs> why didn't you believe me in the first place? <laughs> yep. But it was like a cute, like, it was a very significant shift because that was the definitive moment that he trusts her outside of, you know, her killing someone. And he's like, okay, I kind of know you as a person. Like, mm-hmm. I want to know more now. Oh. <laughs> but it was, a, it was a little bit passive aggressive on her part. To be oh, like, 100%. Like, it, I would not have have gone that way with her as a character like, yeah but again like what she's going to reveal later is horrific yeah so yeah. understandable and, yeah and that kind of triggers into this so basically yelena starts having a little bit of ptsd remembering what all happened and it's kind of triggered by valak saying like okay i'm ready for you to tell me if you want to and she's like i don't even know how to tell you um and a little bit of a trigger warning there's just a lot of like sexual abuse like psych psychotic abuse of someone so she competed in a trigger warning for rape basically so yelena competed in an acrobats competition at the fire festival a couple years into her like servitude for commander dickface and basically commander dickface's fun son rayad said that she wasn't allowed to compete and so he was busy with someone else something else and she's like no i'm just gonna compete i've been practicing like he can't take this away from me and so she's going through the competition and she's doing really well and she's excited and she wins first place. And as she is standing on the podium, looking out into the audience, um, she sees Rayad and he's basically like super upset, like staring at her. And so she's kind of in the tent and, you know, scared to go back out and meet him. But he has people at like all of the entrances. And so when she finally leaves, he he or one of his goons kind of beat her into unconsciousness. And this next part is like really rough. But um, when she wakes up, she's like naked on his bed and he gives her this journal to read. And it's basically a log of every time that she disobeyed him and his preferred punishment for that disobeyal. I don't think that's a word, but <laughs> no, but it's yeah. Uh, yeah. And so they kind of go through basically the first punishment and he whips her and then rapes her. And then what triggers Yelena into like snapping and murdering him basically is that he said, um, well, eventually I'm going to have to train like a new person once you're dead. And so she's like, nope. And murders him. There's all these other girls at the same like orphanage thing yeah, yeah that she's a part of yeah 
Yeah. So that she gets like this kind of PTSD thing. Um, and so she goes through the next days. This is in like the present timeline. She goes through the next days in like a haze. And when she's training, Valet comes in to talk to her. And this is the part I was talking about earlier where like Marin's there and she's like, oh my gosh, it's Valak. And he's focusing on Yelena instead. But basically, Valak says that she he's noticed that the commander has been like acting kind of weird and like taking all these like kind of suspicious meetings that he's not allowed to be in. And then suddenly the commander has accepted a delegation of like diplomats from the South, which like super big red flag because every year they kind of send an invitation like, please, like, let us, you know, come. We can open trade negotiations. And the commander is sent back like a big fuck you basically every single year for the past 15 years. But now all of a sudden he's like, oh, sure, like, let's accept them in and like have a, you know, meeting about it. And so Valak is really perturbed about it. But Yelena's like, I haven't really seen anything like weird or strange, you know, but like, I'll keep a lookout. And as he leaves, the Captain Nix, the one that I brought up from earlier, pops out of nowhere, snags her and shoves her into a dark room nearby. Horrible. Uh, But it's like her kind of not her redemption moment, but like her overcoming moment because she beats the shit out of him, basically. And he's like dying in this room and she's like yeah, shouldn't have snuck up on me in a dark room motherfucker and then walks away <laughs> <laughs> so that was like her growth moment after a very horrific like abuse rape scene yeah yeah the way that scene is handled because it's a it's a flashback kind of thing mm-hmm. and it's it's just enough detail to know horrifically what's going on yeah. without so going back to Daughter of the Forest again mm-hmm. you're sitting in the mind of the character when it's happening and it's very graphic and it yeah. feels graphic this is despite being even more violent than mm-hmm. that scene you feel somewhat removed from it because it's a recollection and because it's not described in super detail yeah 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 But this kind of, I think we talked about it a little bit during the first part of this book, but it kind of struck me as odd that some of these abuse scenes are like talked about in such explicit detail or not maybe explicit detail, but like enough to like, holy fuck, like you maybe didn't need to tell me that. Yet when we eventually get to the like romantic sex scene, it's talked about in such like metaphorical, you know, prose that I didn't even really know it was a sex scene until the end. So it's just this interesting, like this like romantic love that's like a choice that Yelena is making isn't told in any kind of detail, but these like really horrific things that are happening to her are like, it's almost like not trauma porn, but you know what I mean? That's what it feels like. And yeah, the way this scene is included, it felt like a shade too much. Yeah. Right. Cause she's abused her entire childhood by mm-hmm. this person. Like, but the sexual abuse only starts at this one specific time for this one disobedience. Yeah. It seems like it was put in there to make it just because to make it more awful. Yeah. But not consistent with like the characters past all of them yeah because i mean it really could have left it just the regular well not the regular abuse that sounds horrible but like the abuse that she had been experiencing and then it could have been that same line of like oh when you die we're gonna have to train a new girl and that's when she like snaps it we didn't really need to have this like rape scene in here yeah i this is a good example of one that's completely unnecessary to the to the plot it does and and it doesn't really impact her as a character that's the other thing that we Mm -hmm. talked about before when these kinds of scenes are included is does it show character growth is it does it serve somehow yeah and we don't see it Mm -mm. not later no it's just kind of like a i don't know an experience a thing that happened because like even when we kind of get more into the romantic relationship with valak because obviously this is a fantasy romance you see where this is going yeah there's no (laughs) doubt where this is going yeah but um she doesn't even like really like recollect there's like one throwaway line where she's like oh i thought i wouldn't enjoy this anymore because of like what happened to me but like with him it was like great and amazing but which doesn't drive no not at all i yeah not considering how violent that whole yeah. scene was yeah you would think the, she'd be a little bit more and it's her first and only experience with sex and that's how it is yes. and then she's just immediately going to jump into a physical relationship yep yep it just didn't really jive well because that's the thing is i could have done without the rape scene and it, it could even be like alluded to or like she could talk about it but only if it's going to be brought up again with like intention or like a point of bringing it up instead of just throwing it in like i could have done without that and then i could have even done without so i don't know there's we'll get into this in part three and mm-hmm. we'll, we'll circle back to it but there's a scene so she reads his journal, right? Mm-hmm. Like Rayad's journal. Yeah. It's disgusting. And it like the level of detail, that's how you 
like learn about her experiences, mm-hmm. her recollection of reading this journal. And you could have gotten this same impact by alluding to the journal without describing what's in it. Yeah. And like describing her reactions to people like learning about the journal yeah. without going into detail. Like there's a way to include these kinds of things mm-hmm. um, that's more appropriate, I would say, because again, we've kind of talked about like YA versus new A versus mm-hmm. like adult fan, fan fiction. I don't think there should be like labels necessarily, mm-hmm. especially in this genre. I think this is considered like an adult book. Yeah. Which is crazy because I feel like when I first read this, like maybe like 10 years ago, eight years ago, it felt like it was almost marketed as like new, like new older YA. YA. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I think that's, yeah. Yeah, which is crazy, though, because, like, there's no sex scene, but there's, like, these extreme acts of sexual violence. And so it's, like, where – how are we actually, like, making these, like, determinations? You know what I mean? I'm looking through the – I'm looking through the book right now, and sometimes they include, like, a recommended age on the the book itself. Mm -hmm. So this came out in 2005. Please. Yeah. And I don't see one in here, but Mm. all that to say is there are – this is a good book. Yeah. But there are issues with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it kind of makes sense. It was made in 2005. Like, yeah, but, okay, but what Crown Duel came out in 99? That is true. Right? And there wasn't really... Did we have any, like, kind of the, existential crises? No. With... And all we wanted was more romance between, <laughs> yeah. between Mel and Shavreya. <laughs> that is true. I feel like this is the successor to Crown Duel. Like, mm. someone read Crown Duel and was mm. like, I love fantasy romance. I'm going mm. to write my own. And yeah. did it well. Yeah. I but see that. kind but. of steer too far in certain directions. Yeah. Because it just, it threw me off. Because, like, the end of part two is really when we get this, like, very explicit scene. But then, as we'll talk about in part three, like, the sex scene is the most flowery, poetic. I didn't even describe it very well. I, I didn't even know it was a sex scene. I read it, like, three times. I'm like, is this what I think it is? Like, there's. Yeah. And also where it takes. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll so we'll, 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 we'll get that to that next week. So uh-huh. from our shelf to yours. We'll see you on the next page. Hi, readers. If you'd like to help us pick our next book, send us a message on Instagram. Or if you'd like to just listen, we post new episodes every Monday and Wednesday on Spotify, Apple, and Amazon. Thanks for listening. Bussin'.